So, you want to make a motion graphic intro, but you don't know Wolverine personally. Well, that's a shame for you, because I think I know him pretty good. Yep, his name is... Uh... Hey guys, I'm Matt Tess by Kai, I'm Kai, and today we are back once again taking a look at how to make a cool Claws-like motion graphic intro, and we're going to be doing that right now. So, let's go ahead, and, uh, Logan, his name is Logan, yep, alright, um, I'm going to go ahead and hit delete on default cube there, hit delete on our lamp, because we don't need that, and I'm also going to grab our camera, and then hit, uh, Alt G and Alt R to clear location and rotation, hit R, X, and then 90 on your numpad, and hit enter, to confirm that and then hit G and Y to move your camera back behind uh, there's no grid anymore but back behind there and then hit G and hit sorry zero to go into your camera's view now I'm gonna hit uh, shift a to search for a text layer to so a text object and hit R and then X on your keyboard and then nine and zero on your numpad and hit enter to once again confirm that go to the text tab here and we're gonna go ahead and go to the font category and we're going to go and grab this little folder icon and select the folder, the, the font that we want to use. For me, that font is called Antonio, and I'm going to use the bold version of it. I'm going to go ahead and hit open on that. And as you can see, now we have the font all nice and good. I'm going to go ahead and type in something by hitting tab. Let's go into edit mode, and then we're going to hit backspace, delete all that. And then I'm going to type in claws, because it looks kind of cool, I suppose. Um, I'm going to go down to the alignment and change the horizontal to center. And then change the Y offset down until it's about in the center. About right there. It looks pretty good. We can probably go with 2.2. Sorry, 0.26. Yeah, 0.27. 0.27 looks good. Uh, we're going to S to scale that up like that. Um, now we have our text. It looks really good. I enjoy that quite a bit. Now, it's, this is a very simple process we're going to do here. So let's open this timeline up. Change my start frame to 0. And then go to frame 0. Um, go to the material tab here. Hit this little drop down. Choose that material. Go to principal BSDF and change this to emission. And then we can change the strength up to maybe about five, I say. Go to the main tab here. Go down to color management. There's a lot of steps, I know. Go to view transform. Change it to standard so it's actually white instead of like off-white because it's like casting an overlay over top of it because it's like changing the color like a like a, like a filter. Um, check bloom. And then now if we go to render viewport chain, you can see it looks like this. Now we need to go to the world tab and also change the color to black. There we go. Now, that looks really good. I like it quite a bit. But the issue is, is that uh, it doesn't do anything. So, oh, one more thing. I forgot. Sorry. Um, let's go to the second tab here and then change the frame rate to 60. The second tab right here. Actually, technically, it's the third one because this is the first tab, technically. But out of all of these, it's the second tab. Um, all right, cool. Now, we're ready to go. Hit Shift A and search for a mesh plane. Hit R, then X on your keyboard, then 90 on your numpad. Hit enter to confirm that. Now we're going to have to move this a little bit above the text because now it's like on the same place the text is and it's like glitching. So hit G, then Y. Move that up a little bit just so it's not on the text. Then we're going to go ahead and back to the camera view by hitting 0. And then we're going to hit S to scale up our plane until it's out of the camera's view like that. And then hit S, X to scale it on the X axis as well. Um, and we're going to do a little bit more than the X axis because we're going to be sliding this around. So a little bit further than that, like that, I suppose. There we go. A little bit of a buffer space, so we have these big areas right here. Hit tab, go into edit mode, and now here's the cool part. All right, I'm gonna go to wireframe mode actually. Actually, sorry, wireframe mode right there, and so we can see the text. And I'm gonna go ahead and create some lines by using a knife tool. Now, this first, actually, I'm sorry, before we do that, let's actually go ahead and uh, go out of tab, go out of edit mode by hitting tab again, so it's back in object mode. Hit shift D on this plane, and then uh, right click to cancel that. Now, we need two of these, and you'll see why in a moment. You can do as many as you want, but I'm only going to do two. So, um, hit tab, go back in edit mode, sorry about that. Um, now, with the knife tool, I'm going to go ahead and create some some lines here. So, I'm going to just make one big line all the way through like this, just clicking multiple times like that, and then we're going to go back through and like do something like this, right? There we go, cool. Hit enter to confirm that, and now we have a slice across the word claws. Now, with that, I'm gonna go to the uh, face select mode, and then we're gonna go back to the select box tool up here, and then click on this little piece right here. Wait, oops, uh, I can't hit it because it's in the way. So go back to solid viewport chaining. Click that little piece right there, if you can grab it, there you go, that little piece, and then hold down shift, grab the second piece. If you have multiple pieces, then grab it, grab all of those. Hit delete, then faces. 
Now, if you can, you can see, we can see the text beyond that. So what this is going to do is it's going to allow us to make it look like an illusion as if there's been something that's sliced through the um, the blackness and now the text is showing underneath, which looks really cool. So um, if we click again, we should select our bigger plane. We're going to do that, or our other plane, sorry. We're gonna, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and add an some more slices to the slice that we already have. So we're going to create a new one by hitting tab, go back to the knife tool. And then we're going to create a slice that is almost like this one that we have here, but we're going to create more of them. So we're going to do something like this. Just change it up a little bit so it's not exactly the same as the last one, right? There we go. And then hit enter. Now we're going to create a new one. Oh, wait. I, I did not connect that. You have to connect it. I, I apologize. Let's do it again. Nice little slice. And then uh, make sure you connect it by connect, connecting it back up by clicking the first one you ever made. Then hit enter. There you go. Uh, now I'm going to create another slice down here. Like this. Oh, I actually messed it up. Let's, let's undo it. <laughs> Hit escape to just cancel. There you go. There you go. Like this. A little slice of you slice. There you go. And all the way across with this one as well. Enter. Come to back up. Hit enter. And I think that's probably maybe good. Maybe I'll do a little tiny piece right here. Just around the S, I suppose. Enter. All right, cool. Now let's go ahead and go back to face select tool. Face select mode. Grab that tool. Um, and then select these big pieces here, 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 and here. Hit delete. Faces. There you go. Now we have some more slices across that. You can do more slices if you want to, like I said. But for now, we'll leave it the way that it is. So we're going to go back and uncheck this little piece right there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to go use both of these. Oh, hit tab. Back out of edit mode. Sorry. We're going to use both of these planes at different times. So um, let's play this, I think, around okay, around like maybe 70. We're going to go ahead and hit I, scale, and then go back one frame by hitting the the, uh, the left arrow key. And then hit uh, S to scale, and then zero on my numpad to scale to zero. Left click, and then hit I, scale. So now you can see what happens is that this second uh, plane pops back up. The one with more slices pops back up on frame 70. On frame maybe 30-ish, I'm going to select the first frame, hit I, scale, then go back one frame, hit I, Oh, sorry, hit S, zero, left click, I, scale. So now what happens is that on the this frame, there's nothing. That one pops up. Then the second one pops up, but you can't see it because the first one's still there. So let's get rid of the first one real quick. Um, on frame 70, so on frame 69, we'll hit I, scale. Then on frame 70, we'll hit zero, uh, I, uh, S, zero, left click, I, scale. So now the, the plane with only one slash... Uh, it scales to zero on frame 70 when this one pops up. So now it looks like there's more slashes too, like that. Pretty cool. I kind of want to flip this one. So I hit uh, RZ 180. So it's like th that way. It's like the sl slices go a different way. Slice, slice. You know what I mean? Like that. Um, which is cool. So what we're going to do now is we need to add a little bit of more stuff to this. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hit, hit Shift A, search for a plane, and then we're going to just cover up the word clause. I should have done this before, but uh, S to scale it all the way up. And now we just we need something to black black to cover up the um, the the planes, the plane before this one pops in. So on frame 30, the first uh, the first slice pops in. So I'm gonna go to the big one we just added, the one the square one. I'm gonna hit uh, on frame 29, I scaling. Then on frame 30, S to scale it down to zero. Left click. I scale. So now what this does is on frame 29, it's full sized. On frame 29, on frame 30, it is now scaled to zero, so you can't see it anymore. And now we see the first slice. So basically, what we have is this. Let's take a look. Slice, slice. And then on frame like, I believe maybe 130, we'll get rid of this one as well. So on frame 130, um, we'll go back uh, by one frame actually. So I scale, and then on frame 130, S zero. Left click. I scale. So now in frame 130, the multiple slashes also disappear. So now we see the full word clause. Let's take a look one more time. Slice. Slice. Yeah. All right, cool. So that's what we have so far, but it needs a little bit of motion because it's kind of static and it looks kind of weird right now. So what we're going to do is I'm going to go ahead and we're going to jiggle the word clause um, whenever there's a new slicey slice. So on frame uh, maybe uh, 69, let's go ahead and hit location and then on frame maybe 71 location skip two frames i location and then what we're going to do basically is i'm going to jiggle it back and forth so hit uh, g to move it like down over here a little bit hit i location then on the frame in between so frame 72 
um, G, move it up a little bit, I suppose. I location. Let's, what does it look like? Let's see. Let's take a look. Yes, that's what I like. Okay, cool. So it looks like it slices a little bit, which looks really cool. And then we're going to do the same exact thing with the text when it uh, went on the first one as well. So on frame 30, we'll do the same thing. Select all those by dragging a box over top of them. Hit Shift D, duplicate them, move them over here until the second keyframe is on frame 30. So now we have this. That looks really cool. Um, I really like that. But what I don't like is that it looks like this goes over twice. So what we're going to do is delete that and move it over. Yeah. All right, cool. There we go. I like that. Cool. I really enjoyed that. So that is our nice little uh, animation for the slices. But what I do want to do is I want to make sure that um, I want to I kind of want to have a color change come through here as well. So let's actually go ahead on the first slice. I want it to maybe be red. So on da -da -da -da, on frame 70, I'm going to hit uh, actually wait now on frame 130 because that's when it want, I want it to be white on 130. So on 130, I'm going to hover my cursor over top of the uh, the white. Hit I to insert keyframe there. And then on frame 70, I'm going to change the color to slightly more red, like uh, like that, and then hit I. Now I'm going to go ahead and uh, I'm going to duplicate this keyframe. So 70, duplicate that, put it over here to right before 130 so that it stays this color the whole time. But the issue is, is it, du it duplicated the, the location keyframe as well. So we got to fix that by going ahead and dragging our timeline open a little bit, opening this up and then down uh, open the open this up and then go down to object transforms and then making sure that the uh locations all are deleted so we're going to delete all of these these uh these location transforms right here which is this one this one and this one so now it stays where it is but the color stays the same until it gets the white which looks really cool so um, i'm going to on the first keyframe we're going to change this into solid red so on this frame right here make that red like that, I suppose, yeah, hit I. Now I want this to stay red until we get to 70. So what we're gonna do is once again, we're gonna go ahead and go to material and we'll just duplicate the material keyframe this time instead of duplicating the entire thing. So we have to delete it later. So I'll open up this material right here, drag a box over top of all these, hit shift D, duplicate these, and then move them over right before this keyframe right here, which is on 70. So now it stays red the whole time. Red, boom. All right, cool. So now it has two different colors. Um, I don't really know if I like the lighter color. I might just want to maybe... Do I want to do like red then blue? Or red then like yellow or something? Oh, that looks kind of good. I like that. So however my cursor up top, then I hit I. And then we'll duplicate that and then put that right before this keyframe. Alright, cool. So it goes from red to yellow. Red. Yellow. White. Cool. That looks really cool. I like it a lot. Um, now I do think that, uh, that this... It, it needs maybe something else, and I think what that needs, what it is, is the camera needs a little bit of motion. So, drag my uh, timeline back open, change this to the timeline. I, I actually close that. Now, for the camera, I kind of want to, when the white claws come in, I want to kind of do something special. So, on frame 130, I'm going to change the focal length here, and we're going to uh, all the way to the end, which I'll make my end maybe like 180 or something. All the way to the end frame, which is 180, I'm going to zoom out a little bit like that. Hit I, create a, a keyframe. That looks good. But I'm going to change it so that it's not on 180, it's on 120. Yeah, so it doesn't like, looks like it keeps going. There we go. All right, cool. Maybe I'll change the end frame to 200. There we go. Alright, I like that. That looks really cool. You can add a little bit of camera motion and whatnot, but I don't really think that it needs it. I just wanted to kind of get this down because I thought this was a really cool technique for um, creating uh, a, a unique kind of uh, slicing for like text, making things shine through, which I thought was very cool. Um, but yes, I will see you ladies and gentlemen in the next tutorial. Uh, that was gonna, that is gonna be it for today. Like I said, this was a really cool uh, technique to go ahead and make some kind of, uh, make some kind of slight slices across things. I really enjoy that knife technique, but I will see you in the next one. But until then, bye bye.